uh, Peko and um, Infernape. Yeah, right. Infernape Muna? and uh, Fawn as well has recently started picking oh. up a Diddy. I noticed they uh, pulled that out. At, I think it was the the last waypoint. But we're going to see what Joje has to bring to the table in terms of Diddy play against Castar Man. Yeah, very excited to see this match unfold. Castor Man has been, like you said, coming to these weeklies quite frequently. And with that, you get all this matchup experience. So I, I suspect that Castor Man pretty pretty comfortable with uh, the Diddy matchup. And let's see how they play. Oh, Lucky Tilden. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Follow. So I'm already noticing a lot of patience uh, from Joje right now. Just kind of saw him walking back and forth, just kind of in his... Uh, his roaming AI, but already getting some good damage now on Castar Man. Has Castar Man in disadvantage? Let's see. Yeah, Joje is definitely looks like a well seasoned Diddy main. The movement is on point, and there is the toes catching Pichu at the top of the stage. Yep, using the that short hop neutral air to low crush the uh, down smash once again right there. Uh, converting it into the stock the first time and already getting Castar Man to 43, which, you know, as always, the Pichu player, you never want to be that high. It's already right. looking close to kill percent, but that time the down smash connecting and putting Castar Man on the board. Yeah, great response by Castor Man there. I was, I was starting to think that Joje was running away with it, but Castor Man says, uh-uh, keep flipping around, keep moving, I'm going to catch you and yeah, give no. you these hands. Peach is a glass cannon for a reason. He yeah. can explode you just as easy, just as easily as he explodes. Yeah. All right, Castor Man right now kind of trying to bait any option out of Joje with these empty jumps into the center. Joje, though, not really biting. Both of these players playing very patiently thus far, almost getting the F smash. That absolutely would have been a stock just like wow. that up smash. What percent was that? At? What, what percent was Pichu at for that uh, down tilt up smash? 90 something, I think. Yeah. So, def so definitely, you know, within normal normal ranges for a Pichu to explode. Right, I was going to say, yeah, as, as the Diddy player, it probably brings you a lot of joy to see down till up smash kill that early. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's definitely one of those like dopamine confirms. Yeah, <laughs> you get that easy confirm into the into that nice hit. I feel like it's so hard for Diddy to you know. <laughs> oh my, well, <laughs> he anyway. just teleported. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Diddy was like, "All right, uh, I'm, I'm out." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here are my barrels. I'm gonna head out. But I was All gonna right. say, um, typically like, you know. Diddy is converting so much damage, uh, but on Pichu, right, you don't really need to tack it up that much, and then that down tilt up smash is going to kill super early. But the re a lot of the, you know the rest of the more prominent characters that you see in the current meta going to die at like 140 from that, you know, uh, instead absolutely. of 100. Oh, Ooh. all right, doesn't quite oh. go for the jab lock, but some not great DI from Joje, meaning Castar Man going to be taking game one. That game was very back and forth. Um, but wow, great job by Caster Man to seal it uh, with the down smash. I guess catching Joje off guard. Like, yeah, you said the DI was sus. Like, even though Pichu has a ton of rage right now, that definitely shouldn't have killed. Yeah, no, Caster Man went for the uh, the classic Akuma fireball into tech situation. Caster Man didn't even attempt the jab lock. I was a little bit surprised yeah. he just pulled the trigger, but it worked yeah. out. And Joje potentially. Are you. Okay, Joje actually going to be switching to Ike here on uh, game two. Wow, Genesis 2017 final. Right? <laughs> this, is, this is a 1.0 matchup if I've ever seen it. This is a mega throwback, but I will say something unique about Casterman, and I was playing some friendlies with them earlier today, um, and Casterman's actually, through, this, through the history of Smash in general, of like, him playing the games, he's always gravitated to a lot of the sword fighters. So he actually has a pocket mark. So I'm, think right. I'm thinking he's going to be pretty familiar with a lot of these Fire Emblem characters and what they're looking for. But dang, raw F smash from the middle of the stage, almost getting it done for Pichu. Yeah, right now, Castar Man is looking super familiar in yeah. this particular matchup. OJ not quite able to convert off of the neutral air, not getting caught by the down smash either, which definitely could have been close to killing. Ike is definitely a, a bit heavier than your Diddy Kong, but right. Pichu, Pichu's got the strength. Oh, oh. I, I thought that that was going to definitely connect. That's one of Ike's tried and true confirms, but 
Pichu trying to make it back to stage. Back oh, air great should back be air. taking it. Yeah. I'm actually very surprised by this switch armor. What do you, what do you think was going through Joe J's mind? The last game was really close, and the Diddy was doing excellent in the matchup. What, what do you think prompted this? I'm actually not sure. This may be a uh, comfort pick mm. for JoJ. This may actually be JoJ's main. Like I said, I'm not too oh, familiar true. with the player. Yeah. Uh, you know, some players are known to just start with their secondaries, especially in pools winners. Yeah. Very, very fair point. I, I think just from like visually, the Diddy just seemed like it had had the had it. You know, like you know his Ike. Ooh. Well, I guess Ike. I, maybe the thought process was. I could just kill. Yeah. I could I just throw out some smash attacks and goodbye, rat. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, especially with the large range of Ike, we did see Castar Man throwing out a lot of empty movement in game one like that and getting back aired for it. Wait a minute. I didn't even realize Castor Man was down that many stocks. Me neither. <laughs> they just, I just, just exploded. That was pretty wild. But uh, all right, great adjustment by Joje in game two. I, I don't even remember how... Casterman lost their first stock. Like he he two stocked them that game. That was pretty nuts. Yeah. So, wow. Let's see, all right. F tilted off stage and oh, back yeah, there. reading the oh. aggressive T jolt. Mm, okay. It was pretty even for you know when they, during the second stock as well. Yeah, and that time read the there. read the air dodge. This conversion was nuts. Yeah, that was nice. Yep, and once your air dodge is yeah. gone, it's over. Yeah. All right, game three on Hollow Bastion now. Let's see if Casterman can adjust to this, you know, big sword flying at him. It's going to be interesting. Yes. Li like to see him utilize more of his T-Jolt like he's known for. Yeah, so Hollow Bastion, you know, the, the single platform layout definitely gives a lot more, like, scrapping potential, mm -hmm. which I think the rats, especially against a character who is as slow and big as Ike is, you know, scrapping is absolutely what you want to do. And Caster yeah. Man, no stranger to these, like, really great and long Pichu confirms. Yeah, 100%. Great uh, read on the roll there from Castar Man. Trying to set JoJ up at the ledge where, of course, Ike has been known to be weak. And yeah. we haven't really seen much offstage play right there. Castar Man actually opting to reset back into center stage and force JoJ to try and come in. Which I do definitely respect out of Castar Man. Because, yes, Ike is pretty weak at the ledge, especially if you have disjointed moves, you can really just explode Aether, but you have to have confidence in it. Yeah. If you you make one misstep, and it's a reversal into your stock. Very true. Oh, Ooh, good up tilt there, right? Great by Castar Man on the mash. That time, showing the patience once more, like, all right, I'm not just going to run into the Randy up smash from Angel Platform. Yeah, I'm definitely liking this pacing out of Caster Man. The adjustment from game two to this one is looking very clean. Pichu conversions on deck for Caster Man. Oh, good grab. And once again, Caster Man, even right there, I feel like he had a pretty easy opportunity to catch JoJ landing. Once again, just setting back up in this central platform where he is making the most of his money. Not really, you know, interacting with the ether range at all. Not even trying to punish it, knowing that JoJ would be able to uh, reset to the ledge. Very interesting. Twice Casterman threw out those down Ooh. smashes and, and JoJ just didn't punish it. Like... I feel like both of them were pretty open to like a F tilt or something, but looks like uh, you know Casterman is firmly in control of this game, and Joje losing a little bit of steam now. Yeah, really making the adjustments necessary. Joje once again trying for that angel platform up smash, but not quite finding it. Resetting to the ledge once again, but Casterman has no interest in getting close enough to be a third. He's just going to sit back and throw these Akuma fireballs, and Joji is going to have to find some other way in. Yeah. Especially without, you know, without having a projectile of his own, like a banana or anything like right. that. It's he's got to find his way in. That time with the rolling <laughs> F tilt, finally putting Joji on the board. But I mean, definitely not out of the realm of possibility. We saw in game two, Joji just explode two of Castar Man's stocks right, right. before our eyes. A comeback. Uh, <laughs> 
a comeback could certainly be on the on the docket for a <laughs> hey yo <laughs> <laughs> oh Family lord. Friendly stream. Yeah. Hello. Um apologies. Anyway, <laughs> back to the match. Yeah, like you were saying, you know, Peach is at death kill percent right now. Very easily could confirm Nair into to up air. Absolutely. Finally Jojay had center Ooh. stage, but an ill-advised dash attack. Now putting Castar oh, Man good. back in the driver's seat. Not able to connect the second hit of Thunder, unfortunately. And now this is an Ike with a lot of rage. And Pichu, unfortunately, doesn't quite have the burst kill potential that, like, Pikachu does. All right, but Dash Attack at 206 after the hit, still going to be doing it. Yeah, very nicely done by Casterman. Was definitely thrown off guard by uh, the Ike switch in game two, which I'm still curious as to to why. The, you know, I would love to hear Jojay's thought process on that. But, yeah, Casterman adapting and really holding firm in this game. Yeah, really just... What it came down to for Castar Man in game three was the, that was silly, <laughs> was the um, the choice to just firmly hold center stage and yeah. not get too greedy at the ledge. Yeah, Castor Man did a great job of controlling center stage, like you just said, and really lived on that platform throwing, throwing T-jolts. Mm -hmm. Oh! He's so happy! Look at that. Yeah, I won. I won game three. Yeah, nicely done there by Caster Man. Uh, but great set so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice to be back in the chair with you. I've been out a Absolutely. few weeks, but me too. I've been in and out. Yeah, I've been playing Bayonetta three. That's oh. the reason I didn't come last week. I, I was gonna say I think I've caught some of your tweets about the game. Happy, mm. unhappy? What you, what's going on here? As someone who really like Bayonetta two, one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Bayonetta three adds some really good depth to like the combat and the gameplay. It is maybe one of the worst video game stories I've ever seen. Oh, it is no. Just dog shit. <laughs> they <laughs> ruined all of the characters. Oh, no. But I could go on like an, an hour long tirade.